What's going on guys? Welcome to episode 14 of season 4 of Wrecked Bike Rebuild. I'm Chase, my buddy Brian. You're being uh, on top of a table right now, but you will be floated around by Luke. And uh, this is the online motorcycle build show where we turn wrecked bikes into dream bikes. And give them away. That's pretty I cool. made you wait that time. You did. <laughs> you like your waiting. Uh, yeah, so that's what we do here, guys. If uh, you want to potentially win the bike that we uh, finish... Uh, go check out the Patreon page. It'll be the top link down below. That's how we fund this show, and that's how we're able to give bikes away. So anybody that goes and checks that link out, big shout out to you. If you're already one of our Patreon people, high five. You guys are awesome. I'm going to try the elevator thing again because I messed up the record. I'm doing it, Brian. You're going to you want to do it with me? No. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Right, you didn't expect that. I surprised myself with how fast I just fell to the ground. I did not expect to hit the ground that hard. Not gonna I was going to say, did it hurt a little bit? Yeah, my arm got a little I, jerked. I, I heard the whack of your shoe too. Yeah, the man, my arm feels numb now. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, in the last episode, we were focused on the uh, right side uh, handlebar or uh, right side cl clip on. It, it is a clip on handlebar. So either one is correct. I don't like how, I like handlebars or the, the one bar. That's okay. what I like calling. Well, it's still a clip on handlebar. True. Regardless, last episode, we did the uh, brake master cylinder, the brake reservoir. We did the new brake lines and we massively cleaned the front um, calipers. And new pads. Yeah, we did. We did put new pads on there. And we bled the system. We did a lot last episode. In today's episode, we're gonna do the, basically the same thing on the clutch side, we're gonna install the new clutch master cylinder, the new clutch reservoir, and a new sleeve cylinder, and we're gonna end up using the same uh, clutch line that we currently have, but we are not going to be able to bleed the clutch system, and there's a reason for that. So the master cylinder that comes on a uh, 2016 Panigale slash Panigale has an electronic little switch down here that uh, it engages with, so, our uh, new master cylinder, you can see it's a little darker, it's a different uh, model, but it doesn't have the electronic stuff at the bottom. So in order for our motorcycle to know that the clutch is or is not engaged, we're gonna have to install a banjo bolt pressure switch down by the slave cylinder, and that's gonna be in later next week, so that's not gonna be included on this episode. If you're wondering, where all of these fancy things came from. They came from our buddies at Moto Million. That is where we're getting a ton of the parts that we're putting on this motorcycle. These, Luke can't see it, Never mind. <laughs> I, I pivoted and didn't even think about it. Uh, but yeah, Moto Million doesn't offer any gimbals, unfortunately, because we would definitely pick a new one up. Moto Million is where we're getting the majority of the parts on this bike. If you guys want to get parts from Moto Million, you guys can get a discount if you use the code CHASE at checkout. That'll uh, make it so you don't have to buy such expensive parts if you're doing well, stuff you on Well, you can still buy Panigale. such expensive parts. It just won't cost you as much. Right, right. You can. They will be, probably still be expensive, just not quite as expensive. I'm coming into this episode feeling pretty good. I feel like... At least for the majority of it, I'm a little antsy with the slave cylinder thing, but I think I can do a lot of this episode. Okay. Do you foresee any, like, huh, it's going to suck for you at, at blank? Uh, there are some things that I foresee right now that you probably don't. <laughs> well, and, uh, shocker of the century on that <laughs> one. And uh, it will make your life not so much fun if you don't figure them out. Okay. But you'll still be able to get it done either way. Is it something I can figure out now? Absolutely. But, you know, you could switch gears right now or you can finish your chat and then put your head down and see what you got going on. And like I'm gonna I always try to get you to do is I want you to stop. Scan it look all. Look at everything you're doing, right. what it is that you have to do, what the steps are involved, and where to start and where to finish. I'm going to put some gloves on and ponder on these thoughts that I've been given. While I'm thinking about all this stuff, we have our build budget update to do. So all the stuff we're gonna be installing today that we just talked about cost, boop, that much. 
That is our current price of the bike thus far. We're using the same cable. This is gonna be a on off situation. There's still liquid in these lines. So we're gonna have to drain that liquid out before we do anything. At that point, I'm going to want to take this entire assembly off. So I will undo that bolt and I'll need to figure out where this line goes and unplug it. You're doing very well. Talk yourself through it. What's right. next? At that point, this whole thing will come out with the cable. The line will still be here, which is fine because we're still going to use it. The reservoir will be on its own little mount and we can find the tension of the line to figure out where the lever needs to go. And then wherever the extra space is, we'll put the reservoir. And then we'll come down here, figure out whatever parts of the old slave cylinder we need to use for the new one. Okay. And at that point, we just put it on and we're good. You're missing one step. You're gonna put the slave cylinder on. What's it attached to? The brake line. Oh, do we have a new line? No, but you gotta take it off, right? To swap the... Yeah, like take the old slave cylinder off, put the new one on. Oh, okay, that's okay. Yep. So how are you gonna do that? I mean, I assume if I just release it from the line, it'll be free, right? Okay, we'll see how well that goes. I want you to think back for a second to taking the brake lines off of the calipers before we clean them. Do you remember taking the brake caliper, the, the lines off the caliper before we clean them? I think so. Oh, I'm going to make a mental note of what and where and how it's routed? That's one issue we had. Right. What was the other issue that we had? You already went right past it, huh? That didn't leave a mental note in your mind at all. Well, so we had multiple lines up front, so there was like confusion, but we only have right, one well, line let's on back. back. Let's back up. Right. Okay, before putting new lines on. We're talking about taking apart that slave cylinder versus taking apart this caliper. Mm -hmm. Where where did you have troubles? <laughs> had a lot of troubles. <laughs> when we were taking it apart, where did you have troubles? I'm trying to get you to, you know, like I said, I'm trying not to do, I'm trying yeah. to do as little as possible. I want you to figure this out. Yeah. Now, I would prefer you to figure it out before you get started on disassembling. <laughs> Oh, I'm, okay. You're going to say that I need to put the slave cylinder back on so I can pop the, the banjo bolt out when I have something to use pressure against. You remember. That's okay. I actually saw that light bulb. for you people that might be like I am, what we're doing is taking the brake fluid out of the top reservoir with a towel because if this brake fluid is not taken out of this quickly with a towel like this, we'd have to suck it through the entire system. That will take more time. We can do it quicker with a towel. All right, so I'm gonna add a little pressure to this line. So right now in getting all, if the goal is to get all the fluid out, should I like press the lever with that? What the f was that? Bro, what even just happened? What happened? Dude, I have no clue. This little gun exploded. It got liquid into it. The thing turned and you got liquid in it. And it, blew it. it probably doesn't work anymore. You may want to Right. Close that off and get a rag and right. uh, wipe all this down real quick. How do you know it doesn't work anymore? Because like, it just blew fluid out of the gauge. So once that happens... It, it has a hole in it now. It doesn't make any vacuum pressure anymore. And as you pump it, it's going to continually squeeze more liquid out of it until it's empty. That, I just told you that's what it was going to do. Well, here's my thought. I was like, if I squeeze it and it squeezes all of it out, then... Right now, that little plastic gauge inside is being eaten away by brake fluid. Okay. So, having a broken vacuum thing, 
How does one do that? Well, there wasn't always vacuum pumps to bleed brakes and clutches and stuff. Right, so is it close it, squeeze, 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 let I, it out? I, I wouldn't even close it. You just open it just, and pump away. Okay, so basically I can do everything. We just gotta stick and the just hose. Have the top on it. Yeah. and put grease on it now before I slot it in, right? How does it go in? It goes in like that, with this um, flat piece. Where does it, it, go ahead, continue speaking. It goes in like that. Okay, now how does it mate up with the other side? Like that. All right, now, now that put that close. inside of there, because it goes inside of it. Well, oh, I guess I did it wrong then, earlier. So the reasoning for me putting this on first was because it was hard to get that threaded on because it would rotate with this object. Are you confident that you know how those two parts go together? Now that I've placed this inside of here, absolutely. Because this O-ring is going to stop all the liquid from inside of here from coming out. You just need to make sure that that fits into the notch. Oh, okay. That's what notch. you're looking for. That has a mated point. Gotcha. So the lubricant needs to just come over the O-ring? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, with that cleaned, we can now install our pretty little part. Right, now stop real quick, because there's a part that you missed. That loop found on the floor because you knocked it down and you weren't paying attention to it. What part? That little O-ring that looks like a bow tie. Whoa. Did I clean this out of this thing? No, it was actually stuck to that plate. So oh. I think when you put the slave on and you pulled it off, it came off with it and it fell. I see. Bow tie. Uh, it's an O-ring. So the reason for that O-ring is to seal around this rod so nothing gets in this rod because that rod goes into the engine. Oh, okay. So, that's so you kind might of actually want to clean that off too. Oh, holy crap. All right. Yeah. Can you pull that all the way out? Or will it stop at some point? That's not messing nothing up? Nope. Not, okay. This rod goes all the way through the engine from left to right and pushes against the center hub of the clutch. So none of the holes that it's going to go through are off now? No. Okay. See, I would, if, I, if you weren't here, I would have been like, I don't want to pull it all the way out because what if something on the inside of the engine goes Drops. Like, yeah. Nope. nope. Everything is where it's going to be. Everything is all under pressure. Okay. We need one of those... Um, those like 1950s ads. Just a little bit of grease makes your life much easier. Lube is your friend. Dude, yeah, grease is freaking king right now. All right, if this goes in like this. So that rod now, you can turn that rod to index to that plastic piece. That's what I was noticing when you uh, took it out. And judging by the other one I put in, pressing it all the way in is a little difficult, but if I, thread these in, I can... No, 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 You don't want to force anything in. That should go in and seat against everything without bolts. Oh. Well, it like presses off though. You okay. I mean? Well, you want to make sure that everything's going to seat before you just drive it on with a bolt. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. That's a great way to break things. Because no, if for some reason something's not lined up on this side, actually, Oh yeah, you gotta clean those up, buddy. Come on now. Okay, well let me just get this one boy on. Did you have it pushed all the way in? Yeah. Did you run the bolt all the way in already? Mm-hmm. Bolt the back, back out. I wanna make sure nothing's going on over here in the clutch. 
so nice that it's got an open clutch cover so I can see what's going on. So I'm pushing the slave cylinder in and out. Okay, we're good. What are you looking for? Making sure that nothing over here is moving. Okay, you didn't want anything over there moving, okay. So I totally forgot that there's a open clutch cover on this side. That rod actually comes all the way through and you can see the part that it touches over here. Oh, that is pretty cool. Brian tricks, we got gross bolts with corrosion on them. We want to, them to not have corrosion on them. So, thread it into a drill, scotch bright. And I'm just gonna sandwich this dude and drive it in. Drive it in, back and forth, back and forth. It's gonna be quick, cause it's not real long. All right, it's so gonna... that's what it looks like before. How do you feel about that? I mean, I don't know if I expected it to be silver afterwards, but should well, I keep... compare it to one of the other ones? That one doesn't look nearly as bad as the uh, this one did to start with. Yeah, that one that you just did was the worst of the bunch. Yeah. I'm gonna do this one just for shits and giggles at this point. Wow, that one looks a lot better. Look at that. So that corroded bolt, all of those bolts, you're probably gonna wanna put a little bit of grease on them so they don't corrode again or as much. So I only need to put grease on the end and it'll thread up, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we've got the new master in. Woo, woo, yay, yay. Now we're going to- That is not the master. It's <sighs> like cylinder. So now we're gonna install the line with the bleeder right yes all right crush washer on the top crush washer on the bottom line goes on thread on by hand so to not strip anything okay that's good i was going on did you feel just until i had tension and then looseness and was looking for the next tension you found it i did and I was looking for it from the get-go, which was helpful. If you guys are wondering what we're referring to, watch the last episode. Okay, cap on, new slave cylinder on. How's it, how's it look? We're good on the bottom. How's it look? So, something we all need to note, people in uh, Patreon and YouTube land, Duca bike uses the same gold as Olin's. And if it's not the exact same, it's really dang close, which is... All right, let's take a breather. Let's do some B-roll of a thing and then we can move on to the lever. All right, uh, slave cylinder on, freaking solid. That area needed like a little bit of, a little bit of gold. A little bit of zhuzhing. Glad, a little bit of zhuzh. Glad Duke Bike makes uh, that. Okay, so we don't have to do anything with the cable because we're keeping the cable. So now I need to um, route the electrical wires. Should I take these out? Because if we're gonna be getting that pressure switch that goes up here, if I keep them where they're routed, I'll be able to reroute perfectly to where it was routed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So would it be smarter at this point just to clip it? Like clip the wires so that they stay in their spot? You can either clip the wire or break the little switch off, one or the other. How do you, uh, are, is it just like a... You saw how the other one went in. Oh, like the little tabs? Yeah, okay. So we'll just break the old one off. So what I was asking Brian was whenever we get the banjo bolt pressure switch, we're going to have to route the wires to wherever these wires are running. So instead of un wrapping them and like unraveling them through this whole little area. Just gonna like pop the switch off so that we can route these where they are currently being routed. That actually came out totally fine. Cool. So there's that. Okay, so I'm gonna take this all the way off now so that we can kind of play with it. What's still attached to it? Oh, I, was, I didn't want to break that loose because it was gonna, it would, it might leak. But I mean, I guess there's, I, I need the pressure of the line though. All right, upside down, this is on, which means this is off. 
That's on. But I'm upside down, so it should be... Look at it, stick your head underneath it. That's on, pulling towards the bike should be... Wait. Oh, oh my God. God. Dude, how I, do you dude my brain just goes to shit. How do you continue to get that wrong? It's only I when it's, it's upside down when it's uh, a big issue for now, me. Now, snug it back on just a tiny bit. Er, okay. That's it. Now you can take it off. Now for that brake line, you want to angle the brake line so it's not touching the fork leg at all, and then snug it. It's currently not touching the fork leg at all. Okay, well if it's in a good spot, then snug it where it's at and call it done. And we're going to be installing a new one of these anyway. So. Yeah, those are the old crush washers. We just don't want it to move around and scratch anything in the meantime. Okay, um, new master cylinder with lever. Now uh, what we had to do with the brake side is we got some of these Rizoma like mounting bracket options. We said it in that episode, but you guys might be watching this episode and not having seen that. But if you guys order these Rizoma reservoirs, they don't come, unless specifically saying, they don't come with any bracketry. So you have to order these little boys like individually. So uh, we ended up using what? The, the bar clamp and then the adjuster thing. I think that was all one piece. No, nah, see the adjuster thing. Right, but it's all in one package. It, I thought uh, the bar. Nah. It's, so we ended up using these two. No, we just use this right here. Bar clamp and then oh. just that one piece. Okay, yeah. So this is like the positive and the negative of the Rizomas because like you have all these options that match this. But you have to f either figure out or get them all and then figure it out. I which feel like, ones you're gonna use. Right, I feel like the majority of the people, if they just got the bar, like they should be good, depending Sometimes on the Sometimes you don't have room for that though, yeah. And I don't mean room on the handlebar. Sometimes you don't have room if it's underneath the front upper. Right. Um, you know, something like that. Sometimes, like these switches are really small compared to the clip-on bars. Right. Sometimes you don't have enough room on the bar to clip that on. Oh, I see. So it depends on your setup, whether this is the one that's right for you. In case uh, people don't watch the brake episode, Oedeker clamps are these little metal hose clamps that you have to use cutters to get in. Well, they make pliers for it too, but you need to you need to pinch it at the base of the clamp, not at the top. Yeah, the one we're putting on right now is a little difficult to show, but we can show a better view at the other one. I didn't go nowhere. Cool. You didn't even have to pinch it that hard. Yeah, no. Well, I, I, I didn't. I didn't want to pin, pinch it too hard and restrict uh, flow. Well, you're not going to flow this through. The, you're not going to squish the part on the inside. All right. So. All right. Uh, Oedeker clamp on first. Now we route around. All right. Those tubes look kind of, kind of badass. <laughs> all, uh, all the whole thing, all, all the clear and anodized and everything, right. all looks really good. I mean, like it's not like anybody from the front of the bike once it's finished will be able to see it, but just the. You'll see it when you look down at it when you're riding it, though. That's for sure. Sure will. Dude, when you're sitting aboard this thing, looking down at this. Right. And this one uh, is the clutch side. It is slightly tinier than the brake side. And that's how it's supposed to be, right? Yep. Clutch is supposed to have less in it. Okay. So other than filling this and bleeding the line, we're good. Yep. And or the and the um, pressure switch right. as well. So which is a very quick. I got an idea. All right. Now this is going to tell us. Hey, look at me. I'm something important. B-roll. 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 All right, 
and with that, we got a new master cylinder, new Brembo lever, new Rizoma reservoir, clear tubing, uh, MIA on the pressure switch later episode. Brake line is the stock one, but the stock ones are steel braided, so there's really, there's no upgrade. New slave cylinder, and we're only waiting on the pressure switch. Yep. Other than that, I think for for our kind of episodes, that went really smooth. That did. That definitely went smoother than, it's making I, than me... I ever expect any episode to go. All right, so this is where I'm going to try this again. Man, I feel really good about myself. Oh, I don't know what you're fishing for. So, I forget what episode it was. I said something about me feeling really good about myself, and I was brought down quickly and swiftly. Um, oh, you actually did a good job on this. It's about time. No, I can't say that. I sure can. <laughs> okay. Um, you only mixed up on and off five or six times today. That's par for the course for me, though. You know what I'm saying? That's like me using words that don't really exist. Par for the like course. Like flabbergasted. That's a real word. <laughs> no. Words that don't exist. Here's a real one. You know what? I deserve a like on this video for relatively smoothly getting through this with relatively little assistance from you. You actually knew all, all the things that you needed to do to get that done. Right. Conceptually, I was able to handle most of it. So yeah, if you guys got to this point in the video, make sure to hit the like button. We uh, massively appreciate it when you do that and it helps more people see our crazy videos. If you guys want to win the bike, check out Patreon, which will be a top link in the description below. Outro crew, uh, what's an emoji? What's a good emoji to put in the comments for a um, situation? Let's do a high five. Let's do one single high five in the comments for the outro crew. How about the outro crew? Dude, those tells guys are us, crazy on the comments. Tells They're us excited. whether or not they prefer a hydraulic over a cable clutch. Ooh, outro crew, you can let us know if you prefer hydraulic like we have or a cable clutch, which is obviously a little metal cable that goes to the clutch. Let us know in the comments below. Outro crew is crazy in the comments. When I watch through the video and you can know if the, the video is like 40 minutes, the video will be live for like 50 minutes and you have all the outro crew answers. It is, <laughs> it is my favorite. Uh, thank you guys for getting to the end of the video. Chase on two wheels. That is Brian and you're being floated around by the floating uh, turtle that is, that is Luke. That was a Mario reference, not a physical representation of Luke reference. I would have considered that a fat joke if somebody said that about me. So, we'll see you guys in episode 15 where we... Who knows at this point? <laughs>